The last thing we're going to have a look at again is, is some more HD uh, footage material here. Um, but I'm going to take this in a completely different way. and I'm going to start to uh, to destroy this a little bit. So one of the, the really nice things about the film wash is, is how we can use them to, uh, to sort of simulate older, older film stock, vintage film. Uh, and even we've got um, a VHS quality here. So let's just click that over. And you can see... We're interested just in the ones with the asterisks next to them. So let's find a, a good frame to show you. Probably a good frame there. So if I take my blur amount up, so let's just show you what it's doing. So basically it's, it's giving you that sort of sloppy sloppy color really associated with uh, with vhs film uh and one of the things it's also doing is giving us a, a little brief border around there as well so if you don't like that border you can just come in and and scale it up slightly and scale it off so you can see we've really got a kind of actually quite nice and quite realistic looking vhs effect just there uh, if we don't want the VHS effect. So if we come up into the magentas, I've got a nice little faded emulsion here. Cool, which I think I'm going to use uh, for the entire effect. So I'm going to apply that to an adjustment layer. So I'll call that tone. Bring on the faded emulsion. I mean, already that's, that's giving us a, a really nice really interesting sort of uh, faded 70s film there which uh, I, I really really love so that's our sort of overall tone now let's uh, let's add another adjustment layer over the top and I'm gonna call this one um, I'm gonna call this one damage so if we come into our, our extras again uh, I've got this little one here called Highlight Bloom, which I'm just going to drag over the top. And I'm going to use this to, to just sort of bloom the highlights up just a very small amount. So all I have to do is just come in to a little top one there, just sort of drag that over slightly. Just so it's blooming the highlights a very small amount. Cool, and then I'm going to add some flicker to it. So we've got that film flicker, just double click on that. We've got flicker controls. So how much is it gonna flicker? How uh, the how big the variation is gonna be and how many frames it flickers. So if we set that to one, we get a different flicker amount every frame. Now, if we set that to, uh, to two, we get a different amount every second frame, set it to three, every third frame. Sort of makes sense. Cool, so that's, that's actually working really nicely. So that flicker's given us a sort of um, older projector sort of look. In fact, I'm going to rename that to, uh, to film look there, and we're going to add another adjustment layer here, call this film damage. You can see I'm just building up this effect in, in layers. Uh, and I'm going to come down and I'm going to add uh, my film warper. So what this does is it simulates the, the bending of, uh, of old film, which has been stretched when it's, when it's gone through the projector. Just going to keep that at the default settings. And while I'm here, I'm going to add a bit of a gate weave. Now the gate weave filters is going to, is going to throw up an, an error message. You can just hit OK and it will always work um, despite that error message. It's just a little way that we, um, we've done the controls here to sort of make them uh, nice and nice and straightforward it unfortunately throws up that little error but it um it actually doesn't affect the effect itself so the gate weave here is just simulating that sort of uh, sliding 
slurring uh, film travel here. So I'm just going to crank the amount up quite a bit so you can see this quite nicely. Just render a few frames out. Uh, we've got two different versions. We've got gate weave and gate weave edges. Um, the only difference between them is that the gate weave edges will show your background color um, underneath. Um, and the regular gate weave won't do the the regular gate weave will fill in the the details with um, different parts of the of the uh, picture itself so you see it's shaking about quite a lot now if you have motion blur turned on the gate weave will actually also uh, affect the motion blur as well which is which is kind of kind of nice so I'm going to take my frequency down turn that up we've also got a y-axis only so it's only going to bounce up and down rather than left and right as well so i'm going to turn that one as well um and the next thing is to add some scratches while we're here we might as well do the whole thing so you can see we're building up quite a long list here so scratches are just going to give us those sort of film scratches that are going through and we've got scratches amount and scratches speed we can change. I'm going to leave those at the default values again. So you can see we've we've actually quickly built up quite a, a really nice um, old film sort of look, um, which which looks very very different to those kind of regular standard. Um, canned old film looks that you you generally find elsewhere. I mean that's that's really what what film wash is is all about. It's it's about giving you that unique style that that kind of that loving kiss to the uh, to the end of your end of your footage. Um, okay, while we're here, I might as well just add another little vignette. So come into my vignettes here. Uh, I'm going to add a light ellipse. And just sort of blow that out slightly uh, using soft light. Take the opacity down. Not going to do anything too special with that. You've seen the ellipses now. Uh, the final thing that I'm going to do is actually show you a, a quick technique for some fast film grain. We've got a, a fast grain effect here, uh, and there's a, there's a few different ways of, of applying it. Now, generally, the way that I'd recommend is coming in creating a new gray solid make sure it's exactly 50 percent gray hit okay and i'm going to apply a uh, fast grain over here and then just change my blend mode to overlay and what i can if i want to take the uh the grain amount down i can do it either here so that adds 10 percent that clumps really really nicely or i can also take the opacity down because it's just put in as a uh, as a gray layer there now generally what i would do is render out probably five seconds worth of of this film grain and then bring it back in and, and lay it lay it down over the top again um that way if i if i don't want to use the fast grain i can use some of the really slow uh grain the add grain filter here which is actually very high quality but very very slow to render so i can use that without suffering that same render cost anymore i just take this up to uh to full quality here you can see that film grain there is probably a little bit light so i'm going to bring that back up to 15. Cool, so let's, let's render that out quickly and I'll show you what we've got. Here's a quick look at the before and after. So you can see that really, really quickly we've created a drastically different looking style of video than we had before. Using, using that really, really nice um, basic color tone and then the the extras for the for the film damage stuff um, which are included just as as part of the regular film wash which in other after effects uh, filters you're, you're paying hundreds of dollars for 
uh, which I find absolutely astounding. When you when you look at the results and you compare the results between the uh, the film wash method of doing it and these these other third party methods uh, of doing it, it really can't uh, you know they really can't justify the cost. So I hope that's given you a, a brief idea about how you can start to use your film wash color effects for After Effects Volume Three. If you haven't already done so, uh, check out the uh, the previous volume. And remember, you can also get film wash color effects for Apple Color as well. Uh, so that will just give you uh, another another arrow in your quiver. Cool. Well, I'm Ben from Curious Turtle. Thanks for checking out Film Wash, and I'll hope to see you soon. Thanks.